back to the wall today. South Korean and U.S. officials say North Korea has fired a ballistic missile into the sea. It is believed that the missile launched off the east coast flew about 800 kilometers and fell into the water. North Korea has not commented on this report. A U.S. defense spokesperson later says a second missile was launched. This comes after U.S. President Barack Obama imposed new sanctions on Pyongyang after its recent illicit nuclear test and satellite launch. His executive order freezes North Korean government property in the United States. It bans U.S. exports to or investment in North Korea and also greatly expands powers to blacklist anyone including non-Americans dealing with North Korea. The viewer is Steve Miller, who recently returned from South Korea, joins us live on the program. You're welcome to the program, Steve. Hello, thank you for having me. Now, what is the United States saying about this latest action from Pyongyang? Well, the United States, of course, is condemning the actions, calling for a complete cessation of these provocative actions by North Korea. In fact, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry issued a statement calling for North Korea to focus instead on taking concrete issues uh, to fulfill its international responsibilities and obligations. Well, Steve, we seem to have a pattern here. The international community, the United Nations keeps condemning, and North Korea keeps firing all these rockets. What's happening? Well, there's a lot of schools of thought uh, as to what and why North Korea is doing these types of things. Some people feel that I've been to in the past that any time North Korea falls off the headlines, it wants to do something to get attention back to it. Other analysts say that the provocative actions are not necessarily for national community to take up, but rather to bolster support within North Korea to show that Kim Jong-un is actually in control and has the power to do what he wishes to project a force of nature for North Korea to the international stage. Now, Steve, let me ask you, doesn't North Korea have the right to develop a space program? Well, that's a very interesting question. North Korea certainly does feel that. However, there are several UN regulations and resolutions in place that prohibit the development of intercontinental ballistic missiles. So the Taepodong-2, the Rodong-C type missiles that are really far-reaching, including the latest missile used to launch the satellite into space. Just how developed is North Korea's nuclear weapons program? Could it really be planning the preemptive and offensive nuclear strike it promised in response to joint U.S.-South Korea military exercises? Well, we have seen four confirmed tests of various degrees of success. Uh, the latest test, which North Korea claimed to have hydrogen bomb technology, is greatly disputed. Now, North Korea could always try and carry out some sort of preemptive strike. Uh, it has carried out attacks against South Korea that come on a few years ago, the bombing uh, of the shelling of Yongkong Island, the landmine incident last year. But for a nuclear attack against the United States mainland, several things would have to take place. They haven't really demonstrated the ability to have these long-range missiles, the K-08, which is the world C, or the Table 2, to actually have the guidance technology necessary to carry out that kind of long-range attack, or even have the re-entry capability, even though there are widely distributed pictures from North Korea of Kim Jong-un standing before a miniaturized nuclear and standing in front of a mock-up or that picture hasn't been confirmed to be an actual device. So there's a lot of speculation that North Korea doesn't really have the technology capable of the chaos kind of attack just yet. Well, finally, Steve, this week the North Korean Supreme Court sentenced an American college student to 15 years of hard labor for crimes against the state. What is the United States doing about this? The United States has, of course, condemned the action. Robertson over Human Rights Watch called uh, a punishment not fitting, essentially a college prank. Uh, the United States has asked for North Korea for a pardon, a special amnesty for Mr. Here, uh, and now it's just trying to do everything it can to facilitate this us young man. Well, the very Steve Miller, thank you so much for joining us on the wall today. It's been a pleasure.
In the meantime, China and the United States have today opened the world's largest nuclear safety center in Beijing. The ceremony was attended by U.S. Energy Secretary Ernest Monitz and the head of China's nuclear agency, Zhu Dazi. The center, a joint project between China and the U.S., is set to offer training on the safe handling of nuclear materials and the prevention of terrorist attacks on nuclear facilities. China's President Xi Jinping and U.S. President Barack Obama are due to meet in Washington later this month for a summit on nuclear security. China is taking uh, very, very strong steps, uh, and the center of excellence uh, is, in some sense, the exclamation point uh, to show that commitment. Uh, with regard to uh, plutonium uh, recycling, uh, well, we've expressed the, our concern uh, globally uh, in terms of uh, separating plutonium, uh, and uh, we question uh, economics, uh, quite frankly, uh, but what we think is very important uh, that when countries are doing this, uh, and again, I, we've expressed this in terms of other countries, uh, that it's very important that buildup of separated plutonium is not part of the process. Still in China, reports say a Beijing-based columnist has gone missing while on his way to Hong Kong. Relatives say no one has had contact with Jia Jia since Tuesday night when it was set to board his flight. He said to have warned an editor friend about publishing an anonymous letter calling for President Xi Jinping's resignation. The letter appeared on a state-linked site but was swiftly taken down. It is unclear who authored the letter, which had the byline loyal Communist Party supporters. Mr. Jia had reportedly insisted he had no connection to the letter. The incident appears to be the latest in a string of high-profile censorship incidents, which comes as the state tries to polish President Xi's image. Still in Asia, Pakistan's former military ruler, Pervis Musharraf, has arrived in Dubai for medical treatment, days after the Supreme Court lifted a travel ban. His lawyers say he needs urgent spinal treatment unavailable in Pakistan. Mr. Musharraf returned from self-imposed exile in 2013 to contest elections, but found himself entangled in an array of charges relating to his time in power. Before leaving Pakistan, the former president told reporters that he would return to face all pending charges against him. The charges relate to the former general's imposition of a 2007 state of emergency and the assassination of former Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto the same year. 70-year-old Musharraf denies all the charges, saying they are politically motivated. And still to come on the world today, Guinea confirms two new Ebola cases almost three months after it celebrated the end of the outbreak. Please stay with us.